Let's continue our introduction to Copernicus by looking at how we can get rid of some tiling in our textures. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. And in the last video, we took a look at how we could go about taking some points on our geometry and stamping some things from cops onto those points all inside of cops. But I talked about how that wasn't a, it wasn't a seamless texture as you could run into some issues with that. So I wanted to take a look at how we can start to resolve some of that as well as how we can just generate some seamless textures in general, as there were some questions about just generating seamless textures you know, on the comments of the last video. So we'll go over all of that here. Well, let's just drop down a cop net. And I'm gonna drop down a SOP setup. And all this is is a recipe that I've created that just creates these three nodes for me. It doesn't do anything special. You can create it really easily yourself. I'm gonna get rid of that last one and dive inside the SOP import. And we're gonna set up the stamp points first as that's where the questions kind of were arising from. And it's a little bit more in depth than some of the other topics here. So let's drop down a rubber toy. We're going to drop down a split UV seams node. And this just creates a split on our UV seams. So if we take a group node, we're going to need a couple of these actually. The first one, we're gonna just call this one geo. And we'll use that to just get rid of this geo later on and just be left with the points. Let's drop down another group node. And this one we're going to call edges. We're going to set this to an edge group and click include by edges and do unshared edges. And now we can see what the result of that split UV seams has, has allowed us to do. If I just bypass that, you see that we no longer are able to get those seams super easily created inside of a group. We're gonna need that group later on for determining which points we're going to want to do things to. So let's drop down a scatter node here and we're gonna generate those points. Let's drop down a group and we'll call this one points. Make sure this is set to a point group just to select all of our points here. And we'll do an attribute randomize as well. And we're going to randomize the P scale for this, right? So we'll set this to a one dimensional and our min value will set to something like 0.01 and then a max value of like 0.2, something like that. And then we're gonna take an attribute promote, drop this down. We'll set this to a vertex attribute. We're gonna promote our UVs to a point group so that we can have this information for later on for use in Copernicus or have everything transfer over properly. So let's take a group promote as well. And we're going to take that edge group that we created and promote that to a point group. And now we're going to merge these together. Now we're gonna drop down an attribute wrangle and we're gonna talk about ways that we can start to resolve some of the issues that we're gonna run into with our points, right? So let's jump back up here actually to our cop net and let's look at what our UVs actually would be. So let's set this to be UV space. And the issue that we're gonna have is we would have this point right here, right? We have a point here that we'd be copying something to. And let's say the distance to this edge is like 0.1 and our P scale is set to like 0.5 for that. So it's going to try to create a, a stamp that's gonna be bigger and it's gonna overlap, go past this seam. And because it's happening on the cop level, it doesn't know that this is an actual seam here. It doesn't know that this is gonna go past that seam and it needs to move those pixels to a different area on our actual texture map. So we have a couple of options of ways to resolve this. We can do a couple of different things. We can take these points and we can try to relax them away from the edges and away from each other so they're not overlapping or we can just try to remove them all together. Or if it's a really simple stamp, you might be able to get away with using the method that I used for the wet map tutorial that I did 
um, for generating wet maps inside of COPS, you could maybe take that with a very simple stamp, like a sphere or something, if for whatever reason you, whatever reason you need to do that, then you could use that in order to generate a seamless texture map. And that's a little bit more of an in-depth topic, so definitely go and watch that video if you wanna learn more about that. But let's jump back into this SOP import here and let's take a look and try to resolve uh, some of the issues with this. So in my case, I'm not gonna try to relax the points away. I'm just going to remove them because it's just gonna be a little bit easier for us. So I'm gonna pop this out, press Alt and E. I'm just gonna paste in this code that I've already have set up. So what this is doing is it's taking the P scale of our points. It's going to determine how far away from the edge group that we have, how far away that point is and if it's within that p scale range it's going to remove that point so we need to take our string group here and we need to change this to be the name of our edge group which in this case we set to edges and now i can press apply and accept and we should be getting this so it's removing things from our actual flippy as well but that's not too big of a, an issue right now you can just take a blast node and just blast away that geo and we're left with just our points now as i said we're going to take our points and we're going to see if they are within a certain range to our edge group that we had created so there's a couple of caveats with this that we need to just be aware of number one it's going to depend on the scale of your mesh whether or not this code actually works is gonna depend on the scale of your mesh as well as the resolution of your mesh. So let's say the distance between this point and this point is going to be in this, let's just pretend this is our edge group. So the distance between this point and this point is one. If we have a point that's directly in the middle of those points and its P scale is set to lower than 0.5, then it's not going to recognize that it needs to remove that point because it's not going to be you know, within that range of its P scale. So in order to resolve that, we would need to increase the resolution of our actual mesh. And that's just kind of one of the caveats of, of using this method. Now, again, the actual scale of this mesh is going to be important as well as that's going to also play a role in determining which points are getting removed and which ones are not. Now you could probably get away with minimizing that by converting this over to a UV space, which is actually rather easy to do. You just drop down a point VOP, take this split UV seams, wire that in there, and we can just take our UVs and wire that into our position, I believe. Uh, and we need to promote to a point attribute and we would get our we would get our mesh in in UV space and that'd be one way that we could try to minimize that effect. Um, I haven't actually tested it, but that's just something that I think would probably work. So play around with that if you want to see if that works. But let's come back to our blast here and we should be all set and ready to take a look at this. So let's drop down a stamp points node. Wire in our result into the points. We'll do an SDF shape. We'll do an SDF to mono. And we'll wire this into our stamp point zero. And now you can see that we have our points being stamped onto our sphere being stamped onto those points. Now let's actually take our SOP import and make a copy of this. I'm just gonna delete everything except for that repertoire. And we'll drop down a preview material so that we can see this on our mesh. And now we have our points being stamped onto our mesh. And we don't have anything that's overlapping any sort of seams because all those points are getting removed. Now we do have one issue. Let's just pin this. One thing that you need to be aware of, I guess I should say. Let's just crank up the number of points here. And you can see that we start to have this issue where the points are getting removed right around the seams, all the way around the seams. 
And that's just kind of how this works, because again, we're just removing everything that's within a certain P scale range of our points. So we could take our max P scale value and drop this down. And we get a lot closer to those seams. And then we could obviously crank up our point count and get a little bit different, um, a little bit closer to those seams, get that type of a result. Um, but that's just something to be aware of with this type of method. If you're just removing the points, you're going to have those lines at the seams where things just aren't showing up. So if you're trying to cover the whole mesh, probably not the best sort of a setup. But if you're just trying to do something where you've got maybe something like this with a scale of something like this, then, you know, this is a pretty good solution that will work pretty well. So that is how we can do that with the stamps. Let's take a look at some of the methods for um, the actual noises. So I'm going to take these. I'm going to make a copy of them. I'm just going to break these off. And let's take our, well, actually, we can just take a copy of this and then a rasterize setup, followed by a rasterize geo. And we can take this, set this to UVs again. And let's see what we got here. It's going into the camera reference, that's why. So we have our geometry rasterized and the way that we would be going to um, get rid of their seams or if we wanted to, to hype this into a fractal noise 3D, right? We would take our rasterized geo, set this to a add position. And on this rasterized setup, we actually have this original position as something that's being rasterized. So we can see that, pipe that into our name, and then we can wire this into our fractal noise and wire this into our base color. And if I press Shift W, you can get rid of that wireframe. Now you can see that we have these issues on our seams, right? We have this line that's going around them. Obviously not something that's very desirable. So one way to get rid of that is by using the extrapolate boundaries nodes. So this is going to take a couple of things. It's going to take a source, and then it also needs a fill area. And that fill area is just going to be a alpha from our rasterized geo. We can pipe that in. And you can see now we have an even more defined line. So we need to play with these settings here. And in this case, something that I found that works is 0 0.01 and negative 0 0.001. And you can see that that has pretty much disappeared, but we do have this little issue right here. So it doesn't work in every case, but it works pretty well for, for a lot of things. And I would try this probably first and see if you can get away with just using this node. If not, there is a great video by Rohan Dalvi that went um, into how to get rid of this in a different way. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. Definitely watch that video as he's going to go into a lot more detail as to how this works than I will. But I'm going to drop down a, another recipe that I've set up. It's just called Seamless Rasterize, and it's just going to set everything up for us here. So we will take our stop import and wire that into our rasterized setup here. And we can take a look at this wrangle and we get something like this. So what we're doing here is we're taking our rasterized setup, we're piping it into this wrangle where we have a couple of different inputs set up. We have our original position, which is just a layer that's being piped into that. And then we are importing our geometry as our second input. And then we're using this code in order to generate this sort of a map. So if we take a look at our rasterized geo, we come over here, we look at the original position. We can see, obviously, this is, there we go. Um, so we have our original position here, and you can see that we have these, these UV islands. And if we come back to our wrangle, we've just kind of pushed those UV islands all the way into each other. And that helps to resolve some of the some of the issues with the UV seams. So now if we take a fractal noise 3D, we can pipe in our original position here. And we can wire this into our base color here. And now you can see that we have basically the same thing. Let's go ahead and take this 
wire this into a switch node and wire in our extrapolate boundaries into our second input. And we can zoom in and switch over to our first input, which is gonna be our extrapolate boundaries. You can see that we see our seam that's showing up here and I can switch back to that vex method and that just goes ahead and disappears. Now, one thing that I've noticed with this is that this is kind of dependent upon the UVs. And what I mean by that, let's just make a copy of this. And I'm going to take, jump inside here, we'll do a uh, pig head. And the issue with the pig head is that the bottom is very, very large. So if we look at our UVs here, this is where our bottom part of our pig head resides in our UV space. So it's a very small area on our on our UVs. So if I take this and wire this into our setup here, and I'm gonna make a copy of it, bring it over here for our geo. You can see that we have these boundaries still at the edges, right? If I switch over to either one of these, it doesn't really resolve the issue of our texture uh, being having a seam, having a, uh, just a very, very noticeable seam there. And the way that you can kind of resolve that is dropping down a UV layout node. Let's take a look at what this is going to do to our UVs. So, we just need to come to our UV layout and select scale islands to match their surface area. And that's going to take this pig head, the bottom of this pig head, which I said was right here, and it's going to bring it up over here. It's going to scale it up to be a lot closer in size to what it actually is on the mesh. So it gives it a lot more surface area on our UVs, which in turn gives us a lot better of a look on our actual mesh. So you can see that we have, that seam has gone away for the most part. If I switch back to our, um, our wrangle here, you can see that we get rid of that seam for the most part. It is still a little bit visible in certain spots, but it works a lot better. So that is kind of dependent upon the UVs and their size. I uh, just make sure that you pay attention to that. You may need to adjust some things with your UVs if you're using either one of these methods uh, because the seams may not fully resolve themselves if your UVs aren't set up uh, appropriately. Their texel density is, is off. So hopefully this has helped you out. Like I said, definitely go watch that Rohan Dolby video. It goes a lot more in depth into this wrangle and what all is happening. It explains it uh, a lot more. I wanted to leave that up to him since uh, he kind of posted about that first. So um, something that I actually played around with, but I didn't uh, get working or I wasn't happily, I wasn't fully uh, satisfied with, with the results that I was getting from it. Um, and I was doing something that was just a little bit wrong. So I'm um, glad he posted about that. It's definitely a cool method that's uh, you know pretty easy to set up, especially with the, the new recipes. So definitely set that up for yourself as well. But anyways, hopefully this has helped you out and now you know how to get rid of some of those seams and start to mitigate some of the issues that come along with those. Um, but anyways, like I said, this project file will be available on Patreon if you want to grab it on there, definitely do so. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.